This is the all-new Mercedes GLA. This new generation, here in Autogefühl, your number one resource for in-depth car reviews and your number one community to discuss cars. With Thomas in front of the camera and Jonas behind the camera today. Exterior, interior and the driving experience. We'll compare it to the predecessor. What has changed? What's the new emphasis of this vehicle? And since they all share the same platform, A-Class, B-Class, GLA, what are the differences in this respect? So please join us now. If you're interested, in full HD, full screen and full length. Let's go. The new Mercedes GLA has a strong appearance in the front. It's already sassy in the front. I am more of an SUV now. And indeed, well, it's a little bit wider than before. Wheelbase has been increased just a little bit. And different front grills are available. This one here, based on the AMG line with this diamond pin grill right there. This is so-called Edition or Edition 1, a special launch model, but it's based on the AMG line, so most of the things are actually AMG line, you see. Optional, you can get LED lamps. This one here, the optional, optional multi-beam LED lamps with a high beam function as well. And the gray Magnum color, a very beautiful one, the matte color. Always a very special one and yeah, probably one I would also consider. The only disadvantage of those matte colors are you cannot polish them. So if you have some scratches in there, that's a problem actually. Other than that, they stay clean, you know, quite long. So, and when there's normal rain, they clean themselves a little bit. That would be the pro argument for them. And of course, it looks really amazing. This edition also has red contrast here. Other than that, the AMG line general has a stronger lower bumper. And I would like to know, what do you think here, the new front design of the GLA? 4 meters 41, 14 foot 5 or 174 inches is the length of the new Mercedes GLA. That's a little bit increased in wheelbase, as I already said, if you compare it to the predecessor, but the overhang is a little bit shorter, pretty interesting. And if you compare it now to the Mercedes GLB, which would be the bigger brother, this one here is still 22 centimeters or 9 inches shorter. But the wheelbase is identical to the Mercedes B-Class and the Mercedes A-Class. You could so say it's like a put-up B-Class or a way, way, way put-up A-Class. But we'll see more of, about that on the interior. Exterior-wise, you can see that design has been modified, that it's more SUV now, crossover wheel arches, 17 to 20-inch wheels. These are the biggest ones, 20 inch wheels for the normal models. The AMG would then come from 19 to 21 inch. Yeah, also with the, then the red contrast here in the normal wheel style. So again, AMG line, sportier look definitely. You will have more comfort if you go for smaller wheels, of course. Speaking of comfort, there's a normal steel suspension available, which will also do a fine job. If you want to spend more money, we also have the adaptive suspension here today with this vehicle. That is an option. Then we have a chrome frame around the window here. You can also get the dark styling if you like, but this one here, of course, more elegant. And we have a you know, very interesting shoulder area here, and especially with the matte paint. It's really nice to hug the car then, you know? Yeah, <laughs> that's what car enthusiasts do, don't they? So, and that is also to me um, one of the differences. It just looks a little bit fancier, a little bit more lifestyle-ish, SUV, off-road-ish than the B-Class and that could also be an argument to pay a little bit more extra if you compare it to the B-Class because most of the stuff is really you know pretty close to the Mercedes B-Class. This one again a little bit more expensive but a little bit more fancy or what do you think? And now to the rear with 
the common design trend of more horizontally drawn tail lumps, but I think it looks quite modern then. Actually has the shape also of the other bigger SUVs at Mercedes. And then there's this chrome design element right there and also chrome exhaust, not really exhaust tips. Fake exhaust police. Yeah, that's a pure fake exhaust. And also on the other side, the real exhaust underneath. Yeah, <laughs> and the AMG line has this diffuser here in the lower part. So what's the design take? This is the car key, slim and light, pretty, pretty nice. Keyless entry works like this, put your hand on the outside or on the inside. You can also open and close the car with your smartphone, NFC that would also be possible. Door closing sound, that sounds pretty solid. And you really have to slam the doors for GLA, B-Class, A-Class, CLA and so on. Not sure if it's the insulation or so, but if you just do it slightly, it can happen that it doesn't properly close, so you really have to slam them always. Inside of the doors, you see they are pretty upright, as also with the B-Class, that is for more space on the interior. Here then with the microfiber dynamic car insert and leatherette above that, soft touch, and this is also animal free. Then we have a sporty styling here with the carbon fiber insert. We also control the seats from here and also reasonable space at the inside of the doors. Then this styling from this launch model is with red contrast stitches and so on. So you can see it also with the sporty steering wheel, for example, that is also similar in the normal AMG line. Also then with the aluminum pedals in the lower area. So they are also quite fancy, of course, typical AMG line style. The rest of the interior is also similar as A class and B class as well. And these seats here, in this case, is one of the rare animal skin options, also special for this launch model. Other than that, this GLA, together with the other compact Mercedes class, has a wide offer of only fabric, fabric article leatherette mix, full article leatherettes, all animal free. Also then the AMG line usually comes with Dynamica microfiber on the inside, leatherette on the outside. Artico Ambitex is their leatherette brand, depending on the market, they are called differently. So the choices actually of animal free materials that are high grade are almost endless with the Mercedes compact vehicles. So that's very well done overall, even though it's not the case in this very car. And also how it feels, for example, we had this in the CLA, I think you can check out the episode. It has this white black leatherette option available, which also feels very soft and amazing and you cannot really tell the difference. So also for this one, I couldn't tell. I needed to check the configurator to see what it actually is. Seating position here is actually quite upright. You sit 14 centimeters or five and a half inches higher than in the Mercedes A-Class. Same platform, but really higher seating position overall. And that's actually good. So to me, it's the most comfortable Mercedes compact vehicle I mean, yeah, together with the GLB, the bigger brother, of course, that is quite similar from the seating position in the front, just that the GLB will have even more legroom in the rear. But this is actually quite cool. You sit upright, you feel this is now like rather a grown-up SUV. Also, if you compare it to the predecessor GLA, which more went into the crossover direction. Steering wheel can be controlled up and down and in and out. Soon, when we get to another perspectives, more about these screens, you can see it looks like it would be one screen, but it's actually two screens. Soon again, more details. Steering wheel here on the left side, by the way, will be used for the cruise control. And also this thumb control for the left screen, right thumb control for the other screen, and here, for example, the volume jog. So, I think here in the front already quite convincing. Oh yeah, and last but not least, the overview has been increased. So when you look from the inside to the outside, because the pillars are actually slimmer than before, you have more shoulder space. So you can feel really feel at home here. And I mean, it's 86 or six foot one. Still leaves some headroom, although we have this panoramic roof here. Um, 
this can also be opened like this. This is of course an option as well. If you want more headroom, then leave out the panoramic group. Other than that, it leaves you know some fresh air in. You can also close then with this cover, and it's also split to the rear. And then it's quite interesting because we can also um, you know either close it that way or we can try here. Hey, Mercedes, close the sunroof. magic that's a cool feature right to show off to your friends and stuff you know and one more mbux natural voice input example hey mercedes drive me to stuttgart mercedes headquarters starting route guidance for stuttgart now the interior overview first of all soft touch materials here top part even here turbine vent style so it looks pretty clean and cool. Also a little bit different here on the right area if you compare it to the B-Class steering wheel then with these bright elements and I said earlier here with the right thumb for example to control the right screen and you would lose the left thumb if they wouldn't hold the microphone here for the left screen. It starts by the way with seven inch screens each on both sides. The second option would be seven inch here and 10.25 like this here and then this is the dual 10.25 inch setup, the top setup. Even the smaller screen comes standard with MBUX infotainment system. And then the top one, of course, also has it. And also with the natural voice input, for example. We'll test it very soon. Levers still left here for putting in the gear. Just put down for the drive mode. And left side then for the wipers and the indicators. Head-up display, soon also more deals to that and to the screens. First of all, here then, the AC unit, still menu, clicking sound. That's nice. Sometimes these buttons here do not seem to be aligned 100%. I'm not sure if it's even possible, but in this vehicle it seems quite okay at least. Then in the lower part, either you have this shut everything, but everything here with the high gloss black catches a lot of um, dust and so on. Slide this open then you have either an inductive charging platform for your smartphone or especially when you use Apple CarPlay or Android Auto you plug it in like this. Then you have two adaptive cup holders right there. Then there's the next possibility to control the infotainment system which would be this touchpad here. Go back or to the home menu. Then changing the driving modes. We'll talk about that when we drive the car. And then there's this parking assistant, for example. There's a hotkey also to change assistance systems of the vehicle. Also with the new um, uh, car wash function that uh, the roof and windows, everything is closed and the mirrors are folded in just with one function when you're approaching a car wash. Before that, only available with the GLS. And then last but not least, here with the armrest, Covered in leatherette, and you flip it open like this. Then you have two more USB C chargers there and some reasonable space. Here it is, by the way, where you could activate the car wash function when the car is running. Head up display can also be activated or deactivated here, but I think you will always have it activate definitely. And this is also a function when you search, for example, you can say, Hey Mercedes, activate head up display. That's also, you know, a cool thing. To have. Other than that, it is also a touchscreen. Yes, not sure if I mentioned that before, but you know it from other Mercedes reviews here with the new MBOX system. So this is of course another way to control it. And the GPS looks like this. So um, yeah, so actually quite fancy screen and it's also responsive enough. And the CarPlay integration looks like this. Here we go. Doesn't use all of the screen. I think that's also not you know, not too bad. So like this here and this one here is also the optional Burmester sound system. And for a compact vehicle, this has really a nice clear sound. So it's very expensive, yes. But if you want the best sound, I can indeed recommend it. So that's about the infotainment system. If you want to see more of that, for example, there's also this comfort function, which is called seat kinetics. This is then when you activate it, moving the seats a little bit, just, you know, very slight movements. 
during driving to reduce fatigue. And there's also an extensive ambient lighting available where you can, for example, put up the brightness. That's what I always do to have it a little bit fancier. And of course, a nice color, a multicolor, for example, or I always like the ocean blue color, for example, at the inside of the doors. Or then what's also cool here, you can maybe already pick it up on camera now, here around the turbine air vents in the middle, this is one of the fanciest position where this appears then. A crystal clear view on these digital instruments, so they are actually quite fancy. And you can also change the views here, for example, with styles and display. There's, for example, a sporty view available if you prefer that. This has this AMG style. We also see it in the AMG cars. Other than that, what's also handy that you can put the GPS information right in here. So that's, of course, another good um, use for the digital instruments. And can also be put to full screen. In the head-up display, you can even change the contents you want to see there. Um, of course, the normal speed makes most sense. And then even the left and the right part, you can control what you really want to see there. So pretty fancy, have a lot of options here. I can also hop to the right part, of it, for example. But I mean, I would probably just use the basic function. It's good to have it, nice option, everything in your line of sight. Rear view camera looks like this. Have the fake drone view from above and also the real rear view camera and then also the HP helping lines adapt accordingly and it's a very, very good resolution. And now to the rear, let's see about that. So it's a very wide opening of the door and also with a beautiful microfiber on the inside, soft leather red around, so it's a high build quality, pretty cool. Also same design then for the rear seats and the whole form also reminds us of the B-Class, surely. By the way, this rear bench can be moved forward and backward if you have that option, not in this very test car here at the moment. But then it would also go forward or backward 14 centimeters or five and a half inches. So the same dimensions like you sit higher than in the A-Class. Interesting, right? Oh, <laughs> I opened the fuel cap just by leaning on it. It's like you can <laughs> hip open the fuel cap here. Interesting. So let's see, get inside. And this is of course pretty cool. More, uh, more wing ways in, in the precess and also more usage of interior space. So still a lot of knee room left, even though this is set to my driving position. Headroom wise, I can even still put a hand over my head. And again, me even more if the panoramic roof would not be built in this vehicle at the moment there, the shade is then closed. So, and you sit upright, very comfortable, is a very good family car as well. ISO fix at the outside of the seats to install these then, and you can move around very freely here in the rear. It's just at the middle tunnel here. Of course, optional all-wheel drive car and also for stability reasons. So here in the middle part, cup holders, but you can also use this just as a ski hatch and just fold this middle part. And if I would be sitting just in the middle here, that actually works as well. So you can really use this car with three adults. Last but not least, in this middle console, you not only have two more turbine vents, in the lower part, you have two more USB-C chargers. 435 to 1430 liters is the capacity figure. Let's see what that does. Electric hatch we have here and very well usable. So it's a slight increase. This is just a additional cover you don't have to use. Underneath here you still have more storage space. It's also subwoofer. So, and some storage here at the sides, that's possible. I already flipped half of the bench. There's also a ski edge available that you just flip the middle part. And this cover here, the top one, you can also remove. And let me give you some measurements. So the normal length here to the seat is about 80 centimeters. The width here is actually a little bit more than a meter. And the height here to the top cover is about 40 centimeters. Last but not least, what's then the length to the seating position for me as a driver? And that is one meters and 60. So overall, I think you can do a lot of things with the car. You can also reach over here to flip the last of the seat, here we go, and that's then 
the maximum setup and then you get a better impression what's with the luggage and stuff. Here we go. So you can also put it in a vertical way. You can also do a closing test. First of all for the child safety. Oh, there we go. That's perfect. So it's most of the time it may say that it's so sensitive really very well done and yet there's no problem with closing it and you see also with the luggage there it's no problem now to engines all four cylinders and yay hydraulic struts we have here this is a gla 250 most relevant engine turbo petrol engine two liter four cylinder 224 horsepower optional with all-wheel drive but there's also the smaller gla 200 1.33 liter four cylinder 163 horsepower that then the one from the renault corporation and it will also be available as 250e with the electric motor so a p have then with 218 horsepower system output but although it's 250 and 250e the e model is then made with the smaller petrol engine so don't be mistaken for that but this one here the one you can see is the original mercedes engine here the two liter four cylinder then this one here will also be the one for the amg models but of course then modified either to 306 horsepower for the 35 model or for the 45 then with 387 or 412 horsepower for the 45 s last but not least diesels two liter four cylinder diesels one at 16 horsepower in the 180d 150 in the 200d or 190 horsepower in the 220d so yeah a lot of choices and the bigger engine then bigger engines always come with all-wheel drive the middle ones optional all-wheel drive and the smallest ones only front wheel drive so that's the normal logic Welcome to Thomas's driving lounge with the all new Mercedes GLA. Here is a GLA 250. This will be probably the most important engine worldwide for this car. The two liter four cylinder Mercedes engine. You remember, I told you earlier, the smaller 1.33 liter turbo petrol engine would be the Renault based engine. So this one in here about the acceleration figure just below seven seconds so with all-wheel drive as we have it here today is a little bit faster this vehicle here is equipped with the all-wheel drive the formatic system also available with front-wheel drive the very same engine all-wheel drive will be relevant for example for alpine regions you know winter regions so to say um, you know for more pure city um, areas it's not that crucial if you have it or not so but we have it here today and as I said a little bit faster and the overdrive distribution is actually quite interesting so usually when we drive here right now it is 80% in the front and 20% of torque in the rear so there's this you know this clutch it also puts some torque to the rear whoa this was the autonomous autonomous, <laughs> autonomous emergency brake also with <laughs> putting the seat belts tight uh, because there was a, we were quite fast and the car in front of us was turning and then for a second obviously our car thought maybe that car in front of us coming to a stop and then needs to apply the autonomous emergency brake. One of the serious equipment systems that is inbuilt here and we do have the extensive assistance systems package that also comes with more, for example also with the blind spot monitor which we can soon show to you and some other vehicles are approaching us from the rear. Yeah, they are coming. They are coming for us. So, then, yeah, sometimes <laughs> you need to very... Ah, uh, come on. And here we go. Now there's the red triangle. Can we see that actually? Yeah, I think we can see that, yeah. So this is a very good system. And if I would put on the turning indicator, then it's also flashing and giving us an acoustic warning as well. Adaptive cruise control we can set here, left side of the steering wheel, pretty good and easily to control. Well, about the fuel economy, um, yeah, I mean, this engine here is actually quite thirsty. So some nine liters on one kilometers, I have to calculate with that. So that's less than 30 MPG, definitely less than 30 MPG US and 
maybe some more than 30 MPG UK and overall that's of course not really good. Um, if we go to the sports mode by the way, overdrive system changes from 80-20 to 70-30 and let's accelerate 70, well, 65 to 100. Oh, that's it. And the sound was actually quite decent and you see also the acceleration is quite decent. So this four cylinder engine does give us some nice performance and again I changed to the sports mode before so we have a little bit more power at the rear wheels that makes the car also feel a little bit sportier. Also we have the adaptive suspension here built in this vehicle that's an option and um, let's say um, at the compact Mercedes models it does not make such a big difference than with the compact Volkswagen AG models like you know VW, Audi, Seat, Skoda, there the adaptive suspension makes a massive difference, you should always go for it. Here with the Mercedes cars, if you have one of the bigger engines, which is also in this case here, or the GLA in general, you know they are, like with a lot of other compact vehicles, two different kinds of rear axles, one like the more basic one and one more elaborated one. This here, the GLA, always comes with the more elaborated one in the rear already. With the A-class, it depends on which engine size you pick. Um, so you can also go with the base suspension and you'll be just fine, yes, definitely. The adaptive suspension mm, does make it more comfortable a little bit, but then you can also vary a little bit with wheel, cho wheel choices. Here we do have 20 inch wheels. Together with the adaptive suspension, it's still surprisingly fine. So I expect it a little bit worse, So, but that's surprisingly good actually. If you want more comfort, or if you go for the standard suspension, definitely go for smaller wheels. I mean, 20 inch on the GLA, I think it's also too big, and you know, a little bit more dampening from the tires is surely something that, you know, that would be more suitable, suitable for this car. We can also go, by the way, to the off-road mode that is possible, and that would then change the distribution 50-50 front rear. Maximum speed, 110 kilometers an hour, and it also has, um, you know, effect on the EC, how that works, that you can drive a little bit better off-road if off-road situation would happen in a Mercedes GLA. Not sure if that's often the case, you know. Anyways, noise insulation is actually quite decent, so we have it reasonably silent in here. It's also a good motorway vehicle because you have this upright seating vision. Remember, 40, percent, uh, 40 centimeters higher than in the Mercedes A-Class. It does feel somewhat similar to the Mercedes B-Class in driving, yes, which is not a bad thing at all, just a little bit higher than, so I would rather compare it with the B-Class. Um, definitely there's a difference to the A-Class, more notable one. With the B-Class in it, I would say this really feels like a put-up B-Class. So, um, but again, this is a good thing, because the B-Class is, um, to me, one of the best vehicles in the Mercedes lineup, price performance wise. Yes, of course, not the most emotional one, but this could then be an alternative here with the GLA, a little bit more this, you know, SUV emotional um, kind of approach instead of just the compact van. Again, it doesn't feel too much different, but you have upright seating position, pretty comfortable, so it's a good thing that you have a small vehicle still, not with a big exterior length, and still have a comfortable ride and I think that's that's also something really cool. So once again, cruise control. So we get out of the motorway here, so actually quite good and silent here, behavior on the motorway. Let's see when we put the brakes. Oh, I have actually good feeling in the brakes here, so can't complain about that. And overall this car feels you know, really refined. If we compare the previous generation GLA, it didn't feel so much as, an, you know, like an SUV. This one here now more has this grown-up SUV feeling. That's to me one of the most important things about this vehicle, what they also wanted to change. And also to, you know, distance it a little bit from A and B class, that this one here is more than, you know, the, the true small SUV. Then you might think about the Mercedes GLB, which is on almost the same platform. Um, so a derivative, um, you, know, you know, like similar uh, building type, 
a lot of similarities, especially in the front. Um, a little bit different from the wheelbase because it's based on the A-Class long platform then, which is sold in China. Um, this one here definitely feels sportier, easier to drive because of the shorter wheelbase. Same wheelbase as Mercedes B-Class and Mercedes A-Class. So it's a very nice and agile ride. Also when you do some lane changes here, for example, that's easily done. So it feels light and easy and sporty to drive. Even though we don't have like a special AMG version here or so, it's really a lot of fun to drive. And that you sit a little bit higher and then I don't feel that the car would move too much or so, so you can still have a lot of driving fun, just that it's more relaxed. So if you ask me from A-Class, B-Class and the GLA, which one would I pick? Probably this one, and the reason is the A-Class is less comfortable to me, especially if you're a little bit taller, seating position-wise and so on. The B-Class is, is, you know, very good, good car, definitely. Um, also felt actually quite sporty to drive. But then, you know, it has this, you know, compact family stem, you know, compact family car stem. So the, the GLA has a little bit more lifestyle factor to me. Yeah, I mean, that's something very subjective and I always do that mistake because I'm so used to drive this. Um, and the, this one here, of course, you know, also just visually wise, you know, from the exterior, a little bit different, looks a little bit more off-roadish and so on. And, you know, I'm also like this off-road guy. I really like off-road cars and so on. So this would be an, more suitable to me but all the compact Mercedes cars now that's come really close also the CLA is on the on the same platform so there's not so much difference anymore but I think that's also a good thing because then you also have the you know the MBUX system from standard equipment even if you have the smaller screens have the upgraded bigger ones you know so I have to say again um, you know from all the different behaviors comfort motorway it's really easy to steer this car around in the city. The steering is light, but has a good feeling. So it has a natural, natural feeling. Um, then the upgraded assistance system, that's of course very cool. Everything feels really refined and just how it's supposed to be. And on the, on the length of this vehicle on the exterior, you get a lot of car on the inside already. And so there's so much positive to, th to say about this vehicle. There are actually just really two things I can complain and complain about. This is A, the fuel consumption, which is too high, and B, the price, because this car is ridiculously expensive. I mean, three and a half thousand euros extra if you compare it to a B-Class, let's say like a B-Class 250 or a GLA 250 for Medic. It's about three and a half thousand euros difference. But then if you look at this very car here, with the Edition 1, extra equipment, sound system, wheels, and so on and so on and so on. This car, the very exact car we're driving here at the moment, a Mercedes GLA, almost doubles the entry price, you know, which is, you know, depending on also on the um, engine version or something, 30 something, you know, uh, you can get a decently spec for 40, 45, and that's not even cheap. But this one here now, with everything you see, up around 70k euros. What? <laughs> yeah, so that's probably the biggest problem with this vehicle. Everything else is pretty decent. And now to our conclusion for today with the all-new Mercedes GLA. So, biggest difference to the predecessor is this is now more of an SUV, whereas the predecessor was clearly a crossover. It's also a bigger difference than from the A-Class to this one. As I said earlier, they all share the same platform, A-Class, B-Class, CLA and also the GLA here. And there's still some difference, of course, to the GLB, which is a little bit longer, can also house seven passengers and is just bigger from the inside but this one here already has a very decent size on the interior 
and especially this comparison exterior length to interior space the same as with the b-class is really very very good so you have a lot of space especially also on the rear bench although you still have a relatively small car that you can very well park in and out very easy to control easy to steer the whole car feels very refined it's very silent on the motorway so it's definitely one of the best compact suvs no doubt about that in the very different aspects and pretty fancy as also for the mbux infotainment system the natural voice input is also one of the best on the market here at the moment so and of course you sit higher than in the a-class so it's more comfortable and even a little bit more comfortable if you compare it to the B-Class, but also a little bit more expensive. And that's the point. So many great things about this vehicle, but I also said in the end of the driving part, the fuel consumption is a little bit too high with about, you know, eight to nine at least liters on one kilometers. Uh, so you should get bigger figures there. But, you know, with all the particle filters nowadays, which are good that they have, you know, there's more you know pr um, pressure against the exhaust system that might be one of the reasons for that yet again the overprice for the extras and so on yeah that can really be very expensive so we have to see probably i would go for this engine but front wheel drive because the all-wheel drive doesn't make too much of a difference then for this vehicle unless you really need it so you can maybe save some fuel save some money for the entry price so go for the uh, gla 250 front wheel drive and then limit the option list somewhat because, as I said, when you go for this car here with all the specs, it gets so super expensive. I told you that in the driving part at the end of that. Um, yeah, and that's of course the second thing about this car. It's just too expensive. Yeah, but that's what you have to pay then for one of the top in the segment. What do you think about the all new Mercedes GLA? Please leave us your comments. And also compare, for example, the Mercedes GLB or the A-Class or the B-Class. We have all of these reviews. You can also always use the YouTube search, which just typing in auto gefühl Mercedes B-Class, for example. Then you'll find all the relevant reviews. And we always link some interesting reviews in the video description and also in the pinned comment. So you can continue to follow us on our channel here. So I wish you all the best. Thank you so much for tuning in today and see you next time.